Welcome back to P2. Today we're looking at solving binomial problems, Unit 4.4. So often, when we have a binomial expansion, we don't need to expand it fully. Sometimes we might need to expand the first three or four terms, but there are other times where we have to just expand for a specific term, like the x cubed term, or the x to the power of five term and so on. And sometimes that also then is all about mainly the coefficient. So it's useful to kind of understand how to quickly find a specific term within that expansion. So if I have the expansion a plus b to the power n, and I want to find a specific term, it's just n and whatever term I'm trying to find, isn't it? That number, um, within the sequence. Remember, r0 would be your very first term. And then we'd have a to the n minus r, b to the power r. Okay, now as it stands like that, it probably looks pretty useless to a lot of you. So let's actually do it with some examples where I think it makes a lot more sense. So here we have our first example. Find the coefficient of x to the power of 5 in the binomial expansion 3 plus 2x raised to the power 8. So very, very simple and straightforward. So x to the power of 5, this term is going to be 8, 5 for my ncr, n choose r. And it's going to be 3 to the power 3 and then 2x to the power 5. Remember that these powers will always total the same as your total power here, your value of n. And now all I've got to do is work this out to my calculator. So 8c5 is going to be 56. 3 cubed is 27, and 2 to the power of 5 is 32, and that'll be x5. And it's quite a big number, so we've got 48384x to the power 5. Okay, so the coefficient is just the number. Okay, and just making sure you finish off the question with some sort of explanation and just kind of finish it off a bit properly where you know exactly what the coefficient is. Now, let's look at another question. This is quite a standard type of question here. Find the coefficient of x cubed in this binomial expansion. Okay, now, as it stands, we don't need to worry about this one initially but we do need to think about this one. This is going to be our expansion, and actually actually bringing this into it, let's think about it carefully. So we want to find the x cubed term. And the way I'm going to get that is, I'm going to get that when it's 3 multiplied by the x cubed term from the expansion, and then I'm going to have to add the minus x times the x squared term from this expansion. So that is 3 times. Now, the expansion's x cubed term is going to be 6, 3, 2 to the power 3, 3x three to the power 3. Now, the second one now is when I multiply by minus x, so that means I need to multiply minus x by x squared to get x cubed. So it's going to be minus x multiplied by, now the x squared term is going to be 6, 2. So that's going to be 2 to the power of 4, 3x squared. And if you just double check it here, you can see all numbers x cubed. And this one, these are obviously numbers. We've got minus x times the x squared. 
that will give us our x cubed as well. So all that's left to do now is to simplify both of these and add them together. Now I will break it down a little bit just so that hopefully it's a little bit easier to follow. That's my first one and this is going to end up being negative because of that night minus x. So we've got 15 times 2 to the power of 4 16 times 9x squared. And of course, we also need to multiply by our originally minus x. We've put the minus in ready. We need to multiply by the x. So let's change the 2 to a 3 now. So that changes to the cubed as we multiply by that x. So we get 1, 2, 9, 6, 0, x cubed minus 2160x cubed, which gives us 10800x cubed, which means that the coefficient of x cubed is this. Hopefully that made sense and you were able to follow that okay. Now, next most common type of question is finding the unknown. So finding out what this value is when given the coefficient. And probably the type you get in the exam will be a mixture of this and the previous example. So let's have a look at how we would start this. So first thing I want to do is work out the coefficient of x squared. So the coefficient of x squared is going to be 4, 2, 2 to the power 2, kx to the power 2. And that we know is 126. So 4, 2 is 6. So we get 6 times 4 times k squared, x squared. Now, I just want to focus on the coefficients, so let's get rid of the x squared from both. So now on the left, I've got 24k squared, and on the right, we've got 126. 126 divided by 24, and that gives me that k squared is equal to 9. So k is going to be equal to plus or minus 3. And there we have the two potential values for k for this problem. So with this one, we have to be a bit careful. 4 times the x cubed term, and we also need x times the x squared term. And that's how I get my total lot of x cubed. So 4 times now the x cubed term is going to be 5c3, we're going to have 3, and we're going to have ax. So ax is going to be to the power 3, so this one's going to be to the power 2. Then we also need x multiplied, which I'll get rid of the multiplication sign actually, 5c2, 3 it's going to be cubed and ax squared. And that, of course, is 3960x cubed. That's what we're aiming to get towards. So this will give me 360a cubed x cubed plus 270a squared x cubed. And that, of course, is equal to 39 six zero which then means i get three six zero a cubed plus two seven zero a squared equals three nine six zero so i paused then i just realized i've written an x there not a squared now let's look at what we can divide by so we can de definitely divide through by 10, and then 3, 9, 6, does that divide by 9? Yeah, it does. 
So that means divided by nine, we get 44 there. 27 divided by nine, three a squared. And 36 divided by nine is four a cubed. Now, at this point, it is quite difficult. At least it looks that way. As I've got a cubic, and no obvious way on how to solve it. So at this point, you kind of need to look at your factor theorem. If you remember, we substituted in values to, in this case, it's going to be f of a rather than f of x, but 4a cubed plus 3a squared minus 44. And we need to make that equal to zero. Now, if you do get a problem like this, where you need to use your factor theorem, all you need to remember is that one answer to this should be quite straightforward. It should be between probably plus two and minus two, sometimes plus three and minus three. And the quickest way you can find it is probably using the table function in your calculator. So use your table function, put this function in it, set it between say minus three and three on a step of one, and then just put equals and look for where it equals zero. Now, I've just done this in mine, and it tells me that A equals two. Okay, so that makes my life a little bit easier. Now I know that A minus two is gonna be a factor of this. And then I can go ahead and use that factor theorem or long division to find the quadratic part. So let's do that now. Let's get rid of the brackets. A minus two, four a cubed plus three a squared minus zero a, sorry, plus zero a minus 44. So a goes into four a cubed, so that's four a squared minus eight a squared. 11a squared, we obviously bring down the 0, so it's going to be 11a and we get 22a, bring down the minus 44, so it's going to be plus 22, 22a minus 44, so 0 remains there. So what that means is our 4a cubed plus 3a squared minus 44 equals 0 is a minus 2, 4a squared plus 11a plus 22 equals 0. So we know that a equals 2, we already knew that, and then I need to take this and use the quadratic formula on it. And as it happens, in this case there is no real solutions. Okay, that b squared minus 4ac was negative, so the only answer here is a equals 2. Okay, hopefully that's not too bad. That was a bit harder one than normal, uh, but this is the kind of thing that you will need to be able to do for an exam. This is kind of like a, more like a worst case scenario type of question. Before we get stuck into the questions, if you are new to the channel or a long time viewer, but you haven't subscribed yet, just hit that subscribe button. Really does do me a world of good. Um, and as always, I'll put the answers to the question at the end of the video.